I think I'm all set. So this is the first of those questions that I want to go through now. Um, so, so all these questions, you should be able to do them with the topics we've covered through last week. Uh, but the, the questions themselves are in uh, this week's problem set, which again is due one week from now. Uh, be, because I want you to, um, uh, I want you to balance your workload between last week and this week. This week you don't have conceptual questions, so more time to do problem set questions. So this question says, uh, after a mishap, okay, doesn't matter. <laughs> um, like all this background stuff doesn't matter. What does matter is that we are given the mass of the circus performer uh, clings to whatever, it doesn't matter, <laughs> which is being pulled to the side. Okay, so we are being, um, our attention is being pulled towards this tension by another circus artist as shown here below. Calculate the tension in the two ropes. So they are asking us for T1 and T2 as labeled. T1 and T2. If the person remains at rest. Okay, that's an important information. And when they say remains at rest, they do mean velocity is zero, but that's not the important part. The important part is the acceleration is zero. That should uh, give you some expectation that the net force will be zero. Uh, start by drawing a free body diagram, right? Um, so the question itself won't actually, um, actually grade your free body diagram, but I do want you to get into a good uh, problem solving uh, habit, hygiene. Um, this kind of multi-step problem, uh, the, this type of problems that need multi-step problem solving strategy approach. I want you to uh, follow what we are teaching as a standard strategy. The steps of the standard strategy that, um, that I've uh, lectured on elsewhere are step number one, this is what they're telling you to do, draw a free body diagram. And step number two, after you've drawn free body diagram, you need to define axis. And as you do that, you will pay attention to the acceleration. I'll talk about that a little more as I do it. Step number three, you need to break forces into components. And after you've done step number three, you've uh, labeled, decorated your free body diagram. You should be ready to do step number four by simply reading information off of your free body diagram. You write the Newton's second law equation, which says the acceleration is the net force divided by the mass. Uh, sometimes you see me write this the other way, net force is equal to mass times acceleration. Either form is fine. This form, it, um, it highlights the causal relationship. It's the net force that causes acceleration, not the other way around. So let's just start with the drawing free body diagram since that's what we are supposed to do anyway, according to the step. And the question tells you to start by drawing the free body diagram. So my free body diagram, so you have to think through free body diagram of what that you are drawing. So I'm obviously not going to be drawing free body diagram of this circus artist because um, he's not the body on which the forces that I'm um, trying to con um, concern myself with. And as you think through the setup, if you're thinking about the forces on the trapeze artist, um, you should realize that that's not what you want either. Because um, I, I guess uh, the way I'm thinking about it is um, if I'm trying to draw a free body diagram of this circus artist, I would be drawing gravity downward and I would be drawing this arm or apply the force upward. And that actually doesn't go towards answering this question. What are the two tension forces T1 and T2? <laughs> if you got this far, you might be wondering, so free body diagram of what am I drawing? So the thing that should guide your approach is, well, on what object are these forces acting? And I identify the object that these tension forces are really acting is this point here. There's a particular point on the rope, or you could imagine the fist of the circus artist. It's that object that um, the tension forces are on, and so that's the object that I'm drawing free body di diagram of. Let's say um, it's the fist, it's the hand of the trapeze artist that I'm interested in. 
because that's where I can actually draw the forces T1 and T2 and the rest. So, um, so let me draw the, the uh, force vector for T1 that's going to go in some direction like this. And let me uh, mark the angle so that it's clear um, in what direction the force is going. So if uh, this is my vertical direction, so I'm given this angle and from, I think it's an alternate angle theorem or whatever in geometry, these two angles, uh, if these are parallel, then these two angles are congruent. So I'm going to mark this as my theta one, uh, which will be 15 degrees. And T2, that's uh, pointed this way. And although they almost look 90 degrees, please note that they are not at 90 degrees. <laughs> Make sure you uh, read the angle labels and don't be uh, fooled by angles that appear a certain way that they are not. So I'm given 10 degree here. Let me mark that as theta two. So I have to run these two forces that I'm trying to find. And if you are staring at this free body diagram and thinking, uh, I hope you realize that this is not a complete free body diagram because you want the acceleration of the whole thing to be zero. It's uh, remaining at rest. And with these two forces, there is no way that that acceleration can be zero because they are both pulling upward. So I need a downward force that's somehow going to balance these two forces out. And this downward force, it's, it's the action-reaction force pair to this applied force. So let me just call this applied force. And um, I, I guess uh, if someone is drawing a free body diagram of this combined system that like looks like this, then you might be identifying downward force as this weight, uh, which you know wouldn't be wrong because um, the the trapeze artist is at rest. Here the acceleration should be zero, which means the applied force is the weight. And so, because this is the Newton's third law paired to that, this should be weight or mass times g of the trapeze artist. Um, all these details don't really need to get into. I just want to spell it all out in case, um, you know, it's, 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 skip the details can sometimes confuse people. So that's step number one, drawing free body diagram. Uh, again, it should take you the most amount of time, most care, sometimes most creativity to think about everything. So uh, having done that, I have to define my axis to go through the rest of the steps, be able to write down Newton's second law equations. So uh, normally we would try to choose my axis so that the x-axis is parallel to the acceleration. Here, my acceleration being zero, I have complete freedom to choose whatever axis I want. Normally I will try to choose an axis that minimizes the amount of work in the next step. Here, because this is not actually 90 degrees, I don't think there's any uh, particular direction that saves me this step. I just have to uh, make this my x-axis, the straight axis. It's uh, When in doubt, it's kind of the simplest axis to use. It'll, um, um, you know, it's the simplest axis to use. No fuss, no muss. So after having defined my axis this way, I will have to break down my t1 into x component and y component and t2 into x component and y component. So I have two forces to break down. So this is where you want to think through the angles, draw triangle. So I'm imagining this triangle here. And I, I, it's a right triangle with a right angle here. So I need to think through, oh, right. This is gonna be my theta one. So having drawn, identify the right triangle and identify the given angle within that right triangle, you can see that this is the opposite side. So it, the magnitude of this X component will be T1 sine theta. And the magnitude of this Y component, the adjacent to the angle will be T1 cosine theta. It's the kind of um, application of trig uh, functions that you need to get uh, practice on. Um, hopefully by now you are beginning to feel familiar with you know one week in kinematics and one and a half week in a Newton's law strategy where you had to deal with a situation like this. And um, uh, practice makes perfect. <laughs> so with the T2, it's this triangle that I'm dealing with. Again, the right angle is here. 
and theta 2 this being here, this side is now the opposite to the angle that I'm working with. So this will be T2 sine theta 2, and this side will be T2 cosine theta 2. Um, so I've broken the, uh, the forces into components and identified the magnitudes of the components. That's going to help me answer the next question. Uh, what are the Newton's second law equations? So with the Newton's second law equations, make sure that you have to write a separate equation for each dimension and each object. So here I have only one object, but I do have two dimensions, x and y. So I'm going to be writing two separate equations one for x, one for y. So one for x will be uh, my x component of acceleration, uh, which it will be zero in this case because my entire acceleration is zero. That's going to be the sum of the forces. So I add all the force components that are in the x direction. Uh, that would include t2 cosine theta 2 plus t2 cosine theta 2. And I like to uh, indicate the directions of forces in my equation. So because t1 side theta is theta 1 is going to the left in the negative direction, I will say minus t1 sine theta 1. That way I'm expecting both my t1 and theta 1 to be positive. And if somehow they turn out to be negative, that will give me an indication, oh, something's gone wrong. <laughs> so that's my net force, and I need to divide it by mass. And... Um, here, you actually do have to be careful in one sense, and in another sense, you don't have to be careful. In one sense, you have to be careful. So it's the question of mass of what? Because I'm dealing with this point here, if I use mass of the trapeze artist, that's actually wrong. Uh, I have to be using the mass of the fist here. Let me label that as mass of the fist. So it's really the mass of the fist that you are dealing with, but at the same time, for this specific situation, you don't have to be careful because you can imagine doing this. And this is the case whenever you have acceleration zero. You can imagine multiplying this whole thing through by mass of whatever it is that you are drawing the free body diagram of. And on the left hand side where acceleration is zero, you'll still have zero and this will cancel out. So. If you had used to wrong mass here, it wouldn't have affected your final answer. But in other scenarios where acceleration is not equal to zero, you do have to be careful and make sure that the, this mass here is always meant to be mass of the object that you drew the free body diagram for. Okay, let's wrap this up. So acceleration in the y direction will be zero again. And it's actually the way you define axis, this will almost always be zero, uh, y component. So the sum of forces in the y direction, I have a lot. I have these two components that are upward. So let me say plus t1 cosine theta 1 uh, and plus this time t2 uh, and sine theta 2. Sine theta 2, these are the two upward forces and they must be somehow balanced out by the, the applied force which is equal to the weight of the trapeze artist minus mg, and all of that divided by mass of the fist. And again, in this special case, if you had used the wrong force here, wouldn't have mattered because you can imagine multiplying through by mass of the fist. Left-hand side, zero. Right-hand side cancels out. Okay, so this is where um, completing the standard strategy lends you at. It doesn't actually answer the question for you because the that part depends on uh, what was the question? Um, and this is the set of steps that you would be going through almost every single time you have a situation that involves analysis of forces. Where it ends you at is it ends you, lends you in a place where you have equations. I have one, two equations. And if I have only two unknowns, then this is a solvable uh, system of equations. You know, two equations, two unknowns, you can solve it. So before I do anything further, I count my number of unknowns to hopefully verify that I have only two unknowns. So I don't know T1, that's one unknown. I don't, sorry, T2. And I don't know T1, that's another unknown. And I think I know everything else. The angles are given to me. Uh, mass is given to me, 
and a g is a constant, physical constant that's known. So I have two equations, two unknowns. It's entirely solvable. And at this, so now we are ready to finally do the math and solve the um, system of equations. And I guess uh, uh, normally I would do this by hand, <laughs> but since I got my computer algebra system ready and all, let me just do this in Sage Math. Uh, I'll just uh, set up the system of equations here and just let Sage Math do the algebra. It's relatively simple algebra. I don't have to do it this way, but for fun. Um, so I need to define all the symbols that I'm going to be using. T2, T1, uh, theta2, uh, theta1. Um, MF, I don't think I'm going to enter it since I've canceled it out already. But I do need mass M and I do need G. Um, yeah. So those are the variables I'll be using. And uh, let me write down my equations. Equation 1, that's going to be 0, is equal to t2 times cosine of theta 2 minus t1 times the sine of theta 1. Nothing else. MF has been canceled out. And my equation 2 is 0 is equal to t, uh, yeah, t1 times cosine of theta 1 plus t2 times sine of theta 2 minus m times g. And again, mf has already been cancelled out. I don't deal with that anymore. Um, so let me define those variables, equation 1 and 2, and verify that they've been um, uh, input the way I anticipate them to. So the function that I'm using, I think I demonstrated this before in kinematics context. I'm using the solve function. Uh, this is the, e, uh, the built-in documentation that describes how it's used. Again, the examples are what I find the most helpful. Uh, I've used this many times before, so I'm going to use my knowledge of solve. Um, I have a system of equations, equations 1 and equation 2. And I need to solve that for my unknowns, t1 and t2. And when I do it that way, the system will assume that all the other variables are known. It'll just um, and just keep them as they are. So when I do that, Take a while and okay, it uh, I have uh, yeah. So it looks like I have it's a list of lists. Um, so within the outside li uh, list, I have only one element, one set of solutions, which is what I was expecting. So I'm not surprised. Good, and within that one set of solutions, I have uh, two um, um, uh, two um, uh, two elements, one for t1 and another for t2. So let me put it this way. Uh, I'm going to say my solution one, which will be for T1, is that I'll put um, the zero, th so the first element of the set of solutions of those first element. And my solution two will be uh, same output and same set of solutions, but the second element. So let me make sure my solution 1 and solution 2 are T1 and T2. Good. So that's the answer. And especially for questions like this where you are expected to plug in numbers, here's one advantage of uh, doing it this way. You can actually use the facility within uh, Sage Math to plug in the numbers. So solution 1, there's a, something called a, su a substitute, a bound method. I'm going to use that to... Um, to plug in the numbers. It actually saves a lot of work compared to plugging the numbers in a calculator. So I'm going to substitute. I'm using the syntax, uh, the like keyword argument syntax. So it'll be for T1, I need to plug in G. That's going to be 9.8 meter per second squared. M, uh, I have 80 kilograms. And uh, theta 2 is going to be, oh, I think I labeled it here. Uh, let me actually move this over to right. So theta 2 is the 10 degrees. I do have to convert that 10 degrees to the uh, 10 degrees to the radian version. So I'm going to be multiplying it by pi, uh, numerical approximation of pi, divided by 180 um, to make sure that uh, the theta 2, the numerical value is in radians. Theta 1 is 15 degrees to the same conversion. And then, uh, let's see, theta 2, theta 1. I think that's everything. So let me um, do substitution and see. Ooh, yeah. Um, wait, wait, wait. Uh, uh, theta 1. I 
uh, head of typo. Okay, again. Yeah, good. So it's plug in the numbers, did all the calculation for me, and gave me the answer. T1 is this value. Let's uh, do the same thing with the solution 2. I'm just going to copy and paste and change solution 1 to solution 2. And yeah, that's a T2. So uh, T1 is greater than T2. I guess that makes intuitive sense. T1 is having to support more of our weight. So uh, let's plug this in and see if uh, the system says our answer is correct. So we have plug in the numbers T1 of 775 newtons, T2 of 3.68, so 204 newton. Uh, three significant figures should be enough for most questions. Yep, correct. Good. That's, um, that's this question. So really the, um, the part that can't be automated, the part that you have to know how to do is this part, the standard strategy. Uh, going through these steps and writing down the system of equations. That's the part that, at least until AI gets a lot better, <laughs> the, the, that's the part that computers can't do yet or can't do yet with 100% accuracy. Um, the, once you have the system of equations, solving the system of equations, uh, really computer algebra system is really good at doing it. Uh, in, in fact, with less fewer mistakes than human being would. So, so that's the, the solving the system of equations. That's the part that's easily automated. Um, this part is the one that you should learn how to do as future engineer and scientist.